uh, well friends uh, today i am going to discuss with you my last touches by robert browning uh, robert browning is uh, supposed to be a very good poet of dramatic monologue he, and this particular poem it is one of the best among his dramatic monologues uh, my last touches here uh, that's my last touches painted on the wall looking as if she were alive i call that piece a wonder now fra pandolf's hands worked busily a day and there she stands so we have seen here that this poem is a more as you know that this is a monologue here we find only one person speaking that is the duke who is the constant speaker and then boy who has come from another place he is the listener he has come here to negotiate for a second marriage because the duchess is already dead now and here we see a uh, how she he the poet through the mouth of the duke this um, describes the duchess that's my last duchess painted on the wall so he is showing the picture of the last duchess his wife the queen he is praising the photograph and saying that his uh, wife that is the duchess of duke of ferrara was very beautiful and on the photograph also the painter has painted her so well that it appears as if she is alive fra vandolf's hands work busily a day and there she stands so the um, painter fra vandolf is a painter who has painted him uh, sorry who has painted her photograph so well that she appears as if she is standing uh, will it please um, you sit and look at her i said fra vandolf by design for never read strangers like you that pictured countenance the depth and passion of its earnest glance but to myself they turn since none puts by the curtain i have drawn for you but i so he is telling that this photograph is always inside the curtain and nobody has the power to take the curtain and see the photograph it is only he who has the right because he is the husband he has the right to take out the curtain to show to no different visitors who come there and here he is showing that photograph to the envoy the and seemed as they would ask me if they durst how such a glance came there so not the first are you to turn and ask thus sir it was not her husband's presence on only called the spot of joy into the duchess's cheek perhaps fra pandolf changed to say her mantle laps over my lady's wrist too much or paint must never hope to reproduce the faint half flush that dies along her throat so we see that the duke is praising the photograph so well and he is telling that all the particularities all the fineness of the painter's brush has come so well that anybody could doubt and ask the question to the duke as how such thing is possible how one person can paint so well uh, every fineness with every fineness she was painted and must it was uh, anticipated that uh, while fra pandolf was painting her he was so impressed by her beauty that he happened to praise her beauty in front of her and for that also the lady smiled to him and that smile he was able to capture in that photograph a heart how shall i say too soon made glad too easily impressed she liked whatever she looked on and her looks went everywhere 
So it was all well, one. So here, these are the important lines where we find that how beautiful she was, not only uh, by physique or face or like this. She, uh, with her inner heart also, she was a very kind person, very cheery, um, cheerful person. And <clears throat> she made everyone happy. She was so impressed by anybody's gift, let it um, out. And she was pleased with everything, everywhere she was happy, she smi smiled at everyone and there's not much difference between a um, common man and a royal person. So here we find that the king is boasting, the duke is boasting of his 900 year old ancestry, royal life, uh, belonging of royal family and which um, the duo duchess was not able to appreciate um, maybe um, that's the way the um, duke thought or felt the bow of cherry uh, my favor at her breast the dropping of the daylight in the west the bow of cherry some officious fool broke in the orchard for her the white mule she rode with Round the terrace, all and each would draw from her alike the proving speech. Or blush at least, she thanked men, God, but thanked. So here in this paragraph, uh, the poet is trying to say through the mouth of the Duke that the um, Duchess was such a lively person, chirping person, chirpy person that she smiled at the sunset also or any uh, common boy who brought uh, cherries from the orchid. Uh, so she was happy for everything or whenever she saw the white mule on which she rode in the terrace, so if she saw mule on that mule also, she threw a smile on him. So these all things, like she appreciated everything, she smiled everyone and uh, thanked everyone somehow I know not how if she ranked my gift of a 900 years old name with anybody's gift who would stoop to blame this sort of trifling so the um, duke is saying that she didn't even consider my importance that I belong to a royal family of 900 years name and who would tell her to stop doing all these things. She never bothered about these. Even had you skill in speech, which I have not, maybe the Duke doesn't possess that kind of skill. Um, to make your will quite clear to such and one and say just this or that in you disgust me, here you miss or there exceed the mark. And if she let herself be lessened, so not plainly said. So here we find that uh, the Duke is saying that uh, um, it uh, no doubt disgusted me, and I was, but still I was unable to tell her where to stop and uh, when to start and when to stop smiling or uh, how to behave in public. These were the things which I could not teach her. Um, so here we also come to know that Duke, the Duke is very um, uh, rude person. He doesn't want to value other people's emotion, let alone be his wife. Otherwise he could have stopped her. He could have made her understand the reality and the difference between the royal family and the common public. So uh, he didn't prefer to teach her her wits to yours forsooth and made excuse. Even then would be some stooping and I chose never to stop. So this um, duke never felt that he should stop her, he should tutor her, he should guide her. So, oh sir, she smiled no doubt whenever I passed. So the poet is again telling that the, whenever the duke passed beside her or by her, she always threw a smile to him every time much the same smile there was no difference in her smile this grew 
and this kept on growing and growing her behavior was uh, very uh, pleasant to everyone and which the duke could not bear could not uh, like his uh, kind of a jealous husband you can say he could not tolerate all these things he wanted special attention and which uh, which the duke uh, duchess was unable to understand uh, where his her fault was there she stand as if uh, sorry this grew i gave commands then all the smiles stopped together so he was so she was so unbearable to him that finally ultimately he has to give order to kill her and she was killed and now no longer her smile uh, one can see her smile the only smile that is left is in the photograph only there she stands as if alive uh, will it please you rise we'll meet the company below and then i repeat the count your master's known munificence is ample warrant that no just pretence or mind for dory will be disallowed through his fair daughter's self as i award at starting is my object so now he tells then boy that let's be go and meet the other counselors and uh, he is very cunning in the sense that he makes the envoy in a turn makes him understand that uh, in by marrying the count's daughter he also wants some kind of dowry um, but he is not open openly he doesn't say that but inside he has that kind of uh, feeling and uh, moreover he says that his objective is not to have any kind of uh, dowry rather he just wants to marry his daughter um then that is the main object main um, uh, reason nay we will uh, go together down so notice neptune though taming a sea horse thought a rarity which claus of insberg uh, insberg cast in branch for me so while they were coming down they um, uh, happened to see the branch model of neptune Uh, the sea god who is taming the sea horse and this model was uh, made by insbruck in bronze so he just sculpted her so we see that on returning the um, that is a symbol you can say that um, like the um, neptune he also wanted to tame his wife and that is, he couldn't understand that she is a wife as well as uh, she has her own entity so this is the story of the my last touches yeah uh, the poem is a very short poem of 56 lines though it is very short but still it has lots of meaning inner meaning inside it we get to see the psycho uh, this is uh, the psychological part of the inner uh, insight of the duke that uh, how uh, selfish how greedy um, was he he only thought for himself rather than his wife so this letter about all these uh, we can say one more thing that um, this uh, duke has a particular renaissance character like renaissance is the revival of art and learning which flourished in italy during 14th to 16th century he is a 19th century character no doubt but yet he the poet has imbibed in him a renaissance character in him in him uh, we can say that uh, browning was very much influenced by uh, what was going uh, what was happening in italy and by the time of composition of this poem it was believed that he was traveling uh, through italy and he by luck he um, happened to hear a story of a duke who had married thrice and who suspected his wife who was very amiable person very sweet lady um in the same way he suspected her of being unfaithful and she was killed he gave order to be uh, to kill her so maybe that story influenced him and the same thing we get to know here in this poem also and um, what else uh, this poem is um, 
uh, written in heroic couplet and uh, lots of um, descriptive items we can find here its imagery uh, we uh, think of uh, the name of Fra Pandolf and uh, Claus of Innsbruck had been added to show some special effect uh, to their art so the whole poem throws a psychological insight the inner insight uh, we can on the character of the duke and the duchess the whole thing is explained to the envoy through the mouth of the duke so thank you friend